Right, ladies and gentlemen, don't go anywhere as we are now moving into our fourth theme of the day on cultivated proteins. And a decade ago, cultivated meat or lab-grown meat was little more than a futuristic dream of academic scientists. To tell us a little bit more about the global market, our next guest is a business consultant and an expert in China's alternative protein sector. She's here with us today. Please give a very warm welcome to Viola Chen, a manager of GFI Consultancy China. A very warm welcome. So good afternoon, everyone. It's really my pleasure to be here, especially after the fascinating presentations and panel about uh, plant-based meat. And some panelists already mentioned about cultivated meat, and that's the topic for today. And I will take you into a journey to cultivated meat, and I will ensure you a very informative session with like a lot of data-driven like information. So please allow me to use my script, and uh, let's begin. So here comes our very straightforward um, agenda, which uh, first of all, we'll, I will take you uh, to get to know more the overview of the cultivated meat industry. And also then we will uh, at the same time to uh, look at the state of the industry in 2024 and how things might look at uh, if we look beyond. First of all, maybe let me briefly introduce who is GFIC and uh, or GFI Consultancy. So we are a strategic partner of the Good Food Institute GFI, and I will introduce who is GFI in the next slide, with a laser focus on the alternative protein market in mainland China. Same as GFI, we believe in order to feed the next generation, um, like in China, more sustainability, uh, efficiently and safely plant-based cultivated and fermentation-derived proteins are the key solutions. So we are familiar with both international and the domestic industry, and we welcome the opportunities to work with international companies, just like some of you, to bring more new, innovative like products to China. And uh, here, who, who is GFI or the Good Food Institute? Some of you might be familiar with this name because if you Google like Good Food, uh, like Alternate Protein, so Good Food Institute's reports definitely will be top on your search results. GFI is a global network of nonprofit organization, and also we call it like think tank, focused on future proofing the global protein supply through three key areas of work called science and technology, corporate engagement, and policy. Okay, since we are like UAE is part of West Asia, and here you see the entire Asia uh, where meat and the seafood consumption is expected to increase by 78% from 2017 to 2050 on the back of higher urbanization rates and growing wealth in emerging Asia e uh, economies. Actually, we're missing a one line here where we are now, so 2024. Um, so the sheer scale of the demand we are going to be facing in the coming decades obviously means that we need the more efficient system of protein production to keep pace with this demand. Okay, so here, however, the data from the Food and Agriculture Organization of the UN has shown that industrial animal agriculture is responsible for roughly the same share of global green gas emission as the entire transportation sector combined. And a lot of like panelists and speakers already mentioned that before. So it is also among the top two to three most significant contributors to the world's most pressing environmental issues, such as water usage, um, like a loss of biodiversity. Additionally, the increasing emergency of zoonotic disease, which we're all familiar with, um, is a serious concern to human health. Um, and with the vast amounts of antibiotics used in the industrial animal farms pose a significant throat threat to the use of antimicrobial uh, resistance. We also saw during COVID um, that traditional methods of sourcing animal proteins 
um, face like tremendous inefficiency because of lockdown or just different um, like situation like during COVID. Um, so the implication of industrial animal agriculture um, and also like we cannot discount the animal way theory and the the, we, uh, the animal health, which is the force factors. So it is a clear um, that a change of trajectory is urgently needed. That's the reason why we are here talking about alternate protein from plant-based cultivated, and the next session will be fermentation. Mm, so there is an alternative. Um, alternate proteins provide us with more efficient ways to eat meat, eggs, and dairy in a sustainable manner um, without sacrificing the taste, nutrition, availability, and accessibility of the, the original products. So it is the same like theory of change that clicked for electric vehicles and renewable energy, which might be familiar for a lot of like uh, you guys. It doesn't work to ask people to stop like um, driving or just using electricity. It does work to offer them other ways, like um, that will be just as effective or even better at removing obstacles or meeting their like just human motivation. So in this regard, the solution is biomimicking the meat, eggs, and dairy, where products look, taste, and cook exactly the same way, like conventional meat and all, all other products. So there are three production platforms, actually, we are focusing um, in the alternative protein sector that are enabling this innovation. And I am here at this conference to talk about the third one, which is the cultivated meat. Okay, so please allow me to spend some time like in explaining what is cultivated meat and how is it made. Um, the process of cultivated meat, like uh, or creating cultivated meat, borrows technology from the cell therapy industry. Um, so it's, it's from the uh, pharmaceutical and medical industry. To begin with, a tissue sample or biopsy of cells, such as stem cells, is obtained from the desired animal. And you can imagine, like, what, what is your favorite meat type? Initially, the cells are grown in tissue culture flasks as starter cultures to allow cells to proliferate and increase in number. Next, the cells are growing in much larger volumes of culture flasks, also known as a seed train to obtain sufficient numbers to seed a bioreactor or cultivator, which is a phase one on the slide, and where they are allowed to further proliferate. So um, a second phase, um, it includes a maturation stage where culture conditions are changed to push initially undifferentiated cells to differentiate into muscles, fat, and the connective tissues. So there are three tissue types that you know, combine together and make up meat. And depending on the like design final products, like what we, you know, gonna have, and it's like we'll have us in the end. So in order to proliferate or differentiate, cells are growing in a nutrient-rich liquid, referred to as cell culture media, which is also the cost driver of cultivated meat, as some of you might be familiar with. Um, so cultural media includes sugars, salts, amino acids, and the spe specific proteins that they, they require. Sorry, we haven't finished here, so. Cells may also like, be grown using scaffolds, which is um, a phase two, you can see um, like the, the image there. So um, the scaffolds are supporting structures made out of biomaterials. The cells can anchor to, for proliferation or differentiation. The scaffolding material may be incorporated into the final products to facilitate the intricate organization of cells into 3D structures that are characteristics of structured meat, uh, such as steak, which are one of the most popular meat types. 
And also, it's like because I, I heard panelists mention about microalgae or mycelium or fermentation derived materials. Actually, those materials or microbes could be used as scaffolding material for coffee meat production. And that's also the combination of two technology platforms. And it's also one uh, like kind of area that companies are working on in this area. So um, this process usually takes like, the whole process from the phase one to phase two until the harvest. Normally like takes around six to eight weeks, but still far faster than the time required to raise most animals that, you know, for slaughter or um, that um, we eat every day. To summarize, and uh, you know, since I gave a kind of like five minutes explanation what is cultivated meat, um, cultivated meat is animal meat. So I want to highlight here is a real animal meat and which is cultivated directly from animal cells rather than raising livestock. This is like most fabulous uh, characteristic of this um, product. Um, and we mentioned about the issues with uh, industry animal agriculture. So if we look at cultivated meat production in comparison to its conventional meat counterparts, the climate benefits are substantial. So the table here um, shows a like, percentage of reduction in the criteria listed on the left and obtained from a life circle and assessment LCA that carried out by GFI and CE Delft, which is a consultancy company. So the data was collected by more than 15 industry partners and also the industry leading companies and it shows a trend that cultivated meat can outperform all forms of conventional meat when renewable energy is used at a protection facility. And uh, zooming into the highlighted area, with data from dairy cattle um, on the left and the beef cattle on the right. We can see over an 80% reduction in four out of five environmental impacts factors when producing cultivated meat instead, instead of conventional meat. Um, I also would like to highlight um, here that GFI is constantly working to update this data um, using this model and will be coming out of with like, um, updated figures in the near future. And you can feel free to search the LCA analysis cultivated meat GFI, and you could see the most updated uh, reports. Since we are at a Health Innovation Conference, and um, I add this slide before we move into the commercial landscape, which you might be interested. Um, cultivated meat has listed additional benefits, um, especially potentially mitigate the threat of antibiotic resistance against future pandemics, which I have introduced before, um, like to address the current issue from industrial animal agriculture. And yeah, this is uh, one of the key slides. Let's move to where things are in the industry space. Um, according to GFI analysis, here I want to highlight the source of data and because uh, I mentioned about GFI like a lot of times. So this, um, all the like uh, numbers and the graphs are coming from like state of industry reports, which also known as GFI's flagship report released in every April. Um, the reports cover three major production platforms which we are discussing and will be discussing today that we have introduced um, like, like plant-based cultivated and fermentation derived, provided the like, most comprehensive and updated data and insights into the state of different um, autumn protein sectors. Um, so highly recommended if you haven't like read yourself and you could easily Google GFI state of industry reports again. Okay, we haven't done, yeah. So according to the cultivated meat report, um, the number of startups is increasing since the first record company was funded in 2011. And until 20, uh, 2022, we had more than 150 companies worldwide working on cultivated meat. 
So they are in every major world region across 26 countries. Unfortunately, like there's um, like so far, there's no startup entrepreneur in this region yet. And uh, definitely, we expect to see more like pioneers and the leaders uh, working towards that dark, uh, direction this or next few years. And I hope to see uh, like this graph updated in the upcoming report as well. Um, so, yeah, as I mentioned, this data will be updated after this year's State of Industry Report published, which released this April, and uh, it's um, very soon. Okay, so this is also a very interesting slide that some of you might be um, like curious, what's the investment uh, landscape, how it looks like. Um, almost $900 million were invested in cultivated meat in 2022, which accounted for around one-third of all-time investments uh, of the sector, which um, the, the whole sector is uh, kind of like investment amount is sit around $3 billion. So in the past year, um, a number of companies opened, announced, um, or broke ground on new cultivated meat facilities. Uh, it's just like slaughterhouse, right? So cultivated meat production, they need like uh, facilities. It's like uh, making meat from the uh, factory. So they are bringing the total known number of plant um, pilot scale or larger facilities to at least 27 worldwide. And here is a, just a summary of that. And it remains to be seen how quickly we say these companies will be able to commission these um, facilities. And we mentioned in the previous um, slide, um, established meat, food, and the biotech corporates have also played a role. Uh, like besides our startup we mentioned. So those corporates, they join the sector through investment um, partnerships or supporting the production. And I believe um, like some of you guys uh, may also be interested in cultivated meat. So please start a conversation today with cultivated meat companies presenting now and here at the stage. And of course, like we all know, continued innovation is needed for scaling as well as like cost reduction, which still remains one of the issues about the next that we are discussing uh, at the industry right now. So this is the last slide before I move to 2024 and beyond. Um, since we are in Asia, West Asia, and uh, here I want to highlight how the cultivated meat ecosystem is booming in the APAC region. So we talk about the companies including both uh, meat um, and also seafood, but however, the whole system grow way beyond that. The production of cultivated meat cultivated products are also counting on the value chain suppliers, including companies um, providing cell lines, um, um, media ingredients, growth factors, and also like scaffolds, cell culture solutions, and etc. Okay, here comes our last section and the most exciting part, which is 2024 and what it looks like if we look beyond. Lastly, this is one of my favorite slides, by the way. So let's contextualize where we are in the trajectory of the cultivated meat industry. Um, okay, so it's been just more than 10 years, like 11 years since the, the debut of the very first proof of concept, a cultivated hamburger, which was set to cost 325K US dollar at that time. Well, we know like th this still remains the significant like opportunities to bring down the cost of cultivated meat products. Um, but it's helpful to consider just how far we have gone like after a decade, which is a short period of time for technology like cultivated meat. Over the years, by 2019, the ecosystem had grown to over 50 companies worldwide. And then in late 2020, Singapore became the first country to give um, regulatory approval to a cultivated meat product, and the very first products were sold in the market. By the end of 2022, we also have 156 cultivated meat companies, which I, I have showed a graph before, and that's tripled the number from 2019. Last year, both FDA and USDA from the States green light cultivated meat products from two different brands, which are eJust and Upside Food. 
Looking ahead, like by 2026, um, we expect the regulatory approval will be likely in several regions, and there will be significant cost reduction. And by 2030, um, there may be like operational industry scale facilities, because before we mentioned about pilot scale or slightly larger, and uh, there definitely will be further cost reduction. Hmm. So what is a vision for the future protein protection beyond the conventional ones? Um, I also like the, you know, the color of the, the spectrum and the, the, this graph. So we expect continual funding and innovation will drive alternative protein development to, like, along the whole spectrum. And we are products will not only exist as unique pillars. And we heard from the last panel, people, like, they talk about hybrids. So th what hybrid products means? They mean that they will include combination of two or more pillars um, like coming together. Even now, there are certain terms called blended meat, which means we blend alternate protein and traditional animal proteins into the products. And this is such approaches, right? Like we will like accelerate our efforts to create a diverse range of products and the taste same or better, cost the same or less than conventional meat. Here is a slide, which is also part of a GFI APAC. State of the industry report came out a few months ago. You could easily Google, uh, Google it if you are interested. And uh, that report introduced the current state of um, alternate protein industry in the APAC region. So there are many examples of start corporate partnership in the cultivated meat sector in Asia. Um, as I mentioned, like today, we may have some food companies or um, a beverage companies uh, attending these events. Like to, they, you may want to start a conversation from today, since there are several um, like cultivated meat startups presenting here, and or they are at the pitch room. So um, lastly, I circled here, we are seeing the hybrid trend in the industry space. And so certain corporates, and they already grabbed the opportunity to collaborate with startup on working on those hybrid products. OK, so I would like to finish up by sharing the market size projection done by McKinsey. So the market for cultivated meat was projected could reach 25 billion US dollar by 2030. And the potential is real, and especially more to explore in this region. That's all for my presentation, and my name is Viola. So today I didn't have a chance to zoom into the Chinese market and the opportunities, which is actually my main focus. But um, please connect me while linking. You can just scan this QR code very easy, use the camera. And also you can drop me an email so we can chat more later. Thank you so much.